Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out Android 12 for Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. Now it's been a while since I tested an Android operating system on a Raspberry Pi and that's because it never was really too exciting because the lack there of support for Raspberry Pi 4 really didn't make um, Android any usable for Raspberry Pi 4. So realistically, I try to stay away from it because honestly, there wasn't really much to test until now. This new build is on Lineage OS, which is built purposely for the Raspberry Pi 4 and we are running Android 12. What's different between this one and the older images that I've tested before is that this one now supports hardware acceleration, which is huge because that is what was lacking on the previous installations. Without hardware acceleration, everything seems to lag. You can't do any browsing games or any of the apps that really requires hardware acceleration or you'll just get lag from everywhere. So with hardware acceleration supported on this build, it actually completely changes the function of this Android 12 on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now there are a lot of other things that work on this as well. So I'm just gonna leave a link to the original XDA forum post so you guys can see what is enabled, what works, and also where you can get the link to download this image. Now the first thing you need to do to get this going is to download the image, it's about 650 megabytes or so. And then from there, you could just use Raspberry Pi Imager and burn the SD card and then stick it into the Raspberry Pi. That is it. Once you get it all started up, this is what you're presented with. So. To jump on the desktop, obviously this is an Android 12 tablet. So you're gonna have like the icons on the top left and top right. It's really made for like bigger widescreens. So uh, we have the notifications that we could go on top on the here. And if you click anywhere on the top, you'll see this. You could actually pull this down and you can see how everything runs so smooth compared to, well, I'm not gonna say compared to, just it runs really smooth. The frame rates are really good on this. And if you wanted to go into change some settings over here, you could also edit this area, uh, go back out, change whatever you want to change. There is also a dark theme that we'll enable in a second. But one of the things that I wanted to show you guys was settings. Now in the settings itself, you can see it, it scrolls up and down pretty smoothly. Uh, I'm going to go to about tablet and you're going to notice that this is actually Android 12 Lineage OS 9, version 19. We got our IP address and all that stuff. And if I was to go to, um, what is that, Android 12, click this a few times, I think. It'll actually show up this box. This is cool, I just found this out because I don't have, uh, I'm lying. I installed Android 12 on my Android phone. That's the most recent update that I got from this phone. And I've been having a lot of issues with it ever since I, this phone got updated, but that's just another problem. But yeah, I did, I have played around with Android 12 on my cell phone. Anyway, uh, now that we confirmed that this is actually version 12, one of the coolest things I saw about this was, uh, let me get back out. I go into system, and if you scroll down all the way to advanced settings right over here, there is actually Raspberry Pi settings. Audio could be from 3.5 millimeter jack or HDMI 0, HDMI 1, or if you got a high-fi high buried DAC, you could use that as well. You could reboot into recovery. So if you want to install um, Google Play Store and stuff like that, that you have to go through the TWRP, you could use that as well. Uh, the display resolution could, there is actually a lot of display resolution. For my recorder to work, for some odd reason, I needed to put it at 50 hertz instead of 60. Otherwise, my um, HDMI recorder will not pick it up. So that's why this is at 50, but it does work at 60. I just left it at default. It was 920 by 1080, but I had to change it to at 50 just so my recorder would pick it up. That's how come the frame rates looks a little bit weird, but it is working. Next thing you know, you could see it's, if you got an infrared remote, it actually could go on to GPIO 18. You got the power button on GPIO 21. So it does get the GPIOs working on the Raspberry Pi for multiple things like volume buttons, GPIO 20 and 26. And then you have a few of these things. You can also overclock it if you wanted to just by clicking on here. So default, obviously the Raspberry Pi is 1.5. Uh, you could go all the way up to two gigahertz and it should run perfectly fine. I'm just gonna leave it as default because everything seems to be pretty smooth. So I don't need to up the frequency yet. Then you also have SSH and VNC. So if you needed to remote into an Android um, device, 
this is one way to do it. So if you need to run specific programs constantly, but you don't want to use a phone, but you need an Android operating system, yeah, you could actually enable VNC on here and do that as well and have your own little Android server, either with SSH or VNC. So I thought that was a, a pretty cool idea for a future video if you ever need to run an Android as a server for whatever particular reason. Now, there is this option for hardware video decoding, which on his post on the XDA forum, it is not working. Um, you can enable the setting, but I don't think it does anything. But according to him, if he says it's not working, it's not working. I'm not even going to try it. But hardware acceleration is working. So you got Vulkan, OpenGL, and uh, ELES or something, ELS, or I forgot what the other one is. But since those are working, you should be able to play games or even get a lot of anything that requires hardware acceleration to work. Um, one other thing that doesn't work on this is the um, camera. So if you got a Raspberry Pi camera, I don't think it works on that yet. So let's pop into, uh, let's get back out of here, go back into desktop. And if I was to go into the browser, you see how it just opens up and it's very smooth. If you used Android for Raspberry Pi before, not this version, you would know what I'm talking about and how slow things are. So let's go to uh, novaspirit.com. And I typed that in wrong. Did not work. Actually, wow. I, you know what? I'm not, I'm not used to having to click on that. That's what it is. That's pretty interesting because when I, it actually comes up as a search on here. So I'm getting to the point where I'm a little popular, I think, where when I search, it does come up. Um, and my recent post on my Twitter, that's pretty cool. It's got a lot of stuff, but scrolling is very smooth. Uh, I could search, let me go HTTP as novaspirit.com. And I have my forum up. Uh, I have my regular YouTube, have this. Since that is a search, I guess that's why it's not working. But yeah, goes right into my website. S scrolling is pretty good. Uh, I don't have a YouTube app, which would be nice that I should have installed. YouTube. Let's search YouTube. And can I just go through the browser and see if I could watch any videos like this? Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm just clicking whatever video. Oh, wow. It does work. Animation works. That works pretty well. Uh, I got the audio muted, so I don't even know if audio is coming through, but I think it shouldn't because it's not going through the HDMI. So because it's set up to be 3.5 millimeters, so you might not hear anything. But if you do, maybe it's set up that way but it seems to be working. I'm just scrolling up and down. It would be a lot better if I was actually using the app. And since this is not an official Google build, you are not gonna have the Google Play Store. So it's something you're gonna have to install by yourself on the side or side loading the Google Play Store. Otherwise, um, things seems to be working. These are the only apps that are installed into this program right now. But the only thing we tested was browser. That's about it. Um, if you want to play around with this yourself, go right ahead. Everything will be linked down in the description below. I just found that this is actually very, very usable. And if you were to test any applications or try to use it for anything else, you possibly could use this operating system for that for now on and moving forward. So yeah, this was pretty exciting when I saw that Android 12 was running with hardware acceleration. So I wanted to jump in and test it. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.